Hey guys, this is Wes from PC Gamer, and today I'm here with Jane Jensen of Pinkerton Road to play a classic point-and-click adventure game from the 90s, King's Quest VI. Hey Jane, how's it going? Good. I can't even believe this title screen. It's been so long since I've seen this. So when was the last time you played or looked at or were <laughs> thought about King's Quest VI? It's probably like 1992. <laughs> So th did this come out in 91? It was, it was early 90s. Something like that, 91, 92. And I want to say this is, if not the best King's Quest game, is definitely near the top of, of everyone's favorites right. from the series. Uh, so we're going to play through, at least start with the first chunk of the game, and I have some, some old save files, or some new save files, I guess, that we can jump around if we want to look at any specific puzzles or anything. Um, but let's cool. go ahead. <laughs> and, and start with <laughs> Prince Alexander on the beach. I guess there's kind of a cinematic that we skipped that you can, uh, can watch of him deciding to leave uh, and go after the princess. Alexander go, picks up go his royal insignia ring from the beach. Um, well, he has a classic narrator there. It does. So I'm going to go, I'm going to crank up the speed, which is a, a way to get through the game a lot more quickly and maybe switch this to text so that we can can read instead of have to listen to the narrator, who's actually, it's pretty decent, I have to say. He's got some character. Um, and Robbie Benson played uh, Alexander, as I recall. So, yeah, so as we start here on the beach, let's, let's talk a little bit about the, the early development of this game and how this was the first and only King's Quest game that you worked on, along with Roberta right. Wilson and, or Roberta Williams and, uh, yeah, tell me about when you guys started this at Sierra. Well, I'd been at Sierra maybe a year. I'd done some writing on some of the games like Please Quest and uh, worked on a little kids game called Eagle Quest. And then Roberta was getting ready to do a new, a new King's Quest game. And she typically did work with another designer writer to do a lot of the sort of day-to-day -day stuff. Um, and I had the opportunity to do that. So it was really exciting because I was a huge fan of the series. And the very first game I ever played was King's Quest IV, Perils of Rizella. That was the first game you ever played, period? Or mm -hmm. the first, first wow. PC game. So what started with the, with the development? Like, how did you guys develop the plot of making Prince Alexander, Prince Alexander the main character and setting it in the Green Isles, which is it's a very weird place and, you know, is separate from the kingdom mm -hmm. where, like, the first, most of the first King's Quest games take place. Well, some of that was already uh, pretty thought but before I got on the project because the Perils of Rizal was very surprised, had set up that Prince Alexander would go after Hmm. This um, is the relationship he had with the princess. He was, right. in, he was in love with her. And so that was kind of set up at the end as a, as a little teaser of what this game would be about. So those things were already set and um, just trying to figure out what, you know, what the islands were like, what the puzzles would be, what the story would be, and what was going on with Cosima and all that stuff had to be figured out. So the game starts with Alexander marooned on this island. You don't really know anything about it, and he's trying to, to find out like what's going on with the Green Isles, and I guess you find out pretty quickly this is where you're trying to get, but Princess Cosima has gotten trapped in, I guess, the classic like evil vizier yeah. plot with him She's sort of hiding the her away. In the tower. And so I guess at the beginning you don't even know exactly if she's yeah Alexander she wants you to be what's there going on, going on uh, with her or where she is or anything. So the the first island this is the Isle of the Crown where the castle is and you have your your helpful merchant and the the bookseller next mm -hmm. door. They're kind of they're by far the most normal people I feel like in in the Green Isles and then you yeah. go. You go over to the other islands, and things get pretty weird. I'm just reading these little dialogue boxes, and it's so funny because I like I wrote this dialogue, and it was so long ago. It's like like finding a uh, grade card or something from. <laughs> so, how much of the the writing was you versus other people on the team? Do you do you remember kind of how you guys divvied up responsibilities and what what you worked on? 
Yeah, so when we were first designing the game, I, uh, I went to Roberta's house every day. She had this beautiful house on Bass Lake, and we sat in the living room with a huge pad of paper and just mapped out, you know, what the islands were and what the major puzzles were. And, um, but then, you know, the actual dialogue, you know, that was sort of the groundwork that, <laughs> that I was doing in-house, so all the dialogue I wrote. Um, and, uh, you know, just seeing the game through production, making sure that that everything was kind of working the way it should. So even before you were really doing a lot of the, the actual writing for the dialogue that got into the game, like how long were you guys just holed up in her house doing kind of the, the planning stuff? It was about two weeks. And in that time you mapped out, like, all of the, the rooms or, or screens for the game and who all the characters were and everything? It was more like the, the, you know, the broad strokes, like here are the islands, here's what basically happens on that island, you know, here's more or less the flow of, um, and then things like, uh, I, I believe we had two paths for the game, so there was sort of a short path and a longer path. Yeah, so when you get close to the, the end of the game, which I did recently in trying to replay this and prepare myself, you have the fairly easy solution, which is not actually easy because it's a, a tough game, and then you have the much longer mm -hmm. solution where you end up going into the underworld and yeah. and fighting death. So that was planned from the beginning? Yeah, so the idea there, you know, I think every time you do a new project like this, you're sort of trying to think about what would be a new thing to try that would be, you know, up to date. And the idea here was, because King's Quest V was, um, the first time they'd done a point and click. I think four was still typing interface. Mm. And it was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of negative reaction to that, just that it was made it so much easier. So the idea here with King's Quest VI, which was the next game was, let's have this sort of shorter path that, you know, sort of the casual player might take, and then the longer path would satisfy the, um, the kind of hardcore gamer. I'm not sure it worked out that way, but um, <laughs> that was the idea behind it. Look at that, pick up those three white pixels. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of hard to judge what, how much of a kind of a pixel hunt the game was on a much lower res screen. We're obviously playing on a modern 1080p display with, you know, everything's kind of blown up. I don't know if it makes it harder or easier to spot that. But still, things. I mean, everything's very blocky because, yeah. you know. I had a problem climbing the, the cliffs of knowledge when I was playing before where I would I kept misclicking on the, st the stones that you're supposed to climb up and falling off and, and dying <laughs> by falling off the cliff. Um, so yeah, this is not an easy game, I think, that can be said of all of the King's Quest games. And when you guys were doing your initial planning or then going further through development, what was the, the development process for the puzzles like in terms of how challenging they were and how direct they were or how kind of obfuscated they were through some item you had to find somewhere that would help you solve the puzzle? I think, um, you know, I was just interested in staying in true to the King's Quest series. Like, um, one of my favorite puzzles in this game is the whole, um, the dwarves, the seven, the, the scents. Mm -hmm. You know, and you have to find an inventory item for each one that sort of will fool that particular sense. And, you know, that to me is a really classic King's Quest kind of puzzle that it's an inventory-based puzzle, but it also has a lot of logic to it, and um, so I'm just trying to stay tr true to that fairy tale feeling. So we can get over there shortly. I'm trying to remember the process, to get through the game. I know I have to give the merchant my ring to trade for something good. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I think you, have, you must have to know what you want, but gosh, I really don't remember. Yes, he does have, he does have something that I need, and I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. <laughs> but he will trade me any of his little goods here oh, right, cool. for a copper coin. It took me a long time to find that coin on the beach in, in the box. So then you can come back and trade that for something else. Okay. Yeah, so the, I feel that like works. these... These four items, you've got the mechanical nightingale and the flute and a couple other things are kind of, there's like the core puzzle items, I guess, because you keep coming back and, and trading, and trading those and getting... That's very clever. <laughs> 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 I 
Isn't there something in this tree, or is that later on? Uh, I think the Cosima's bird does mm -hmm. fly over to the tree eventually. So let's go check out the castle. And there's a, there are a lot of puns in this game, both text puns and visual puns. So here are the guard dogs, mm -hmm. who are obviously dogs. And the, the like, captain of the guard, I guess, is is a different type of dog. He looks a little more regal. So these guys don't think I'm a prince, so maybe this is why I couldn't trade away my ring yet. Show these guys my ring. It looks pretty good for, you know, as low res as it is, I think. It's not too bad. It's got some fun animation. A lot of the... Oh, he's like a collie. I forget that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the death screens are, are, are pretty funny when, when you get crushed by something or, or burned alive or something. They're, they're pretty entertaining. The good old days. When yeah. You could <laughs> And every death in King's we have, Quest. Uh, we have some deaths in Mobius like that. I mean, you get reset back automatically, but it's, I, you know, it's fun to die. So it, just about every annoying. scenario in which you can die in this game has a unique pun associated with it. Some of which I think are, are pretty cringeworthy, but, they are, <laughs> but they're funny too. Oh my gosh. This is Josh Mandel. So we used um, live actors to base this. Image on. So who is Josh? He was um, a writer on at Sierra. He co-wrote a couple of the Larry games. Did he pose shirtless for? I think this he photo? did. Yeah. I can't remember who this guy is on the left. Was Alexander based on anyone? Yeah, but I can't remember who. It's like I just totally recognize Josh there. It's cracked me up seeing that picture. I forgot all about that. Now he's playing the um, this this character, the genie, the genie type character. Um, he was sort of an interesting point of contention at the very beginning because I wanted him to be in love with casting and make this this big traumatic, like tragic subplot that he loves her but she will never love him, you know. And then he sort of self self sacrifices to help Alexander out, but. Uh, Roberta thought that was a little too tragic for King's Quest, so we kind of, it is a little subtext of that left in there, but. So instead of a love triangle, you'd have a love square <laughs> of everybody loves Cosima. That's me, I'm always trying to get tragedy in there somewhere. So yeah, what were your contributions to the plot and, and how, like how the story of the game would play out versus you and Roberta? Was that just the two of you brainstorming everything and kind of coming up with it together? Yeah, I mean, I had, you know, ideas and, you know, like Land of the Dead, that's, you know, it's definitely logic cliffs, that's uh, stuff that I was more interested in. So you hammered out the, the basics of the game in the first couple of weeks, the broad strokes. How long mm -hmm. were you guys working on King's Quest? It was probably about a year. Was that about normal length of time for, for Games of Sierra? Yeah. So I feel like this is pr it's pretty ambitious for the time it came out in terms of how big the game is. Um, I guess obviously the audio version came out a little later on CD, or, or did it launch simultaneously on, on CD and yeah, remember. disc? I remember, you know, that this game was one of the first that we actually had real actors on. I mean, we had done some games with voiceover before, but it was just like the programmers going in the sound room and, you know, it was all people in house. So this was the first game where we really had uh, actual actors from LA working on it. And so, do you remember this guy down here who wants you to go come swimming? It's, it, it's vaguely familiar, but I don't remember what it is you're supposed to do with him. So, the, the genie shows up multiple times throughout the game trying to kill you, basically. And if you ignore him long enough, 
He goes Let's away. See, yeah. But he does get on your side eventually, I think. I think at the very end. But in the meantime, he he keeps trying to lure you into accidentally killing yourself, which he's quite good at. <laughs> he's just like, yeah, let's go for a swim, and then you <laughs> and then you get pulled out into the ocean and die. I love it. So were all the characters based on someone who worked at Sierra? Yeah. Pretty much. Did they do the voices as well? No. This game, like I said, was the first game where we had real actors. So to get around the, the islands, we have to get a book that we can trade to the bookseller. Map, right? A map store. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and then he gives the magic map. Oh, that's right. The bookseller gives us a book to be able to cast spells. The rabbit foot. I don't even remember what the rabbit foot is for. I think it might be with the um, the little sense guys. Mm, Maybe yes. Just the guy who feels the, the gnomes. You're right. So one thing that makes this game really difficult, which you can probably say for all of Sierra's games, is there are a lot of items you need that it's really easy to miss. And if you don't get them at the right time and then you progress many hours later, you can end up being stuck without having the item you need, like a mint, for example. Well, you can always go back and get it, though. It's never, you never reach a place where you have to literally restore, I don't think. I, I think there are, like in the, the Land of the Dead, you have to, if, if you go that route, you have to get, uh, for example, you have to get a handkerchief from a ghost to give to her son, and if you don't get that, then he won't tell you about the secret passage to get through the castle, and then maybe there's a way to get yeah. through that I don't know about, but I think then you're just, you're stuck. Yeah, it could be that something like that where you go to the Land of the Dead, you can only go once and you have to be ready for it. But as a rule, you can generally go back, you know, the main mm -hmm. island and get stuff that you need. So what is, is this the genie too? This is the genie. He's everywhere. He's always spying on you. He also likes to get high on these mints, I think. <laughs> All right, now he'll tell me about the map. King. Cool. Oh, so now he comes over and gets a mint. <laughs> so I guess that's a hint. I'm obviously a hint for a later puzzle. His, I think the. Uh, oh, here we're going to yeah, see he what's gets, going on with the scene right now. He gets in some trouble for getting, getting drunk on mints. <laughs> you guys work to put a, a lot of comedy in this game, amidst the the puzzles and and even integrate into a lot of the puzzles, I think. I would love to. Yeah, there is. So let's go over to one of the other islands and we can. So what do we need to get past the gnomes? We need the bird, the mint, we need the rabbit's foot, and there are two other There's senses. something with the eyes. Oh, that's right, the invisible ink. To be able to get that too. So it might be a good time to, since I can't remember where we get everything, I can probably jump into some save files, hopefully, and 
Let's <laughs> see if I have. Okay, so I've got everything now. Feather. Okay. So this was one of your favorite puzzles mm -hmm. that you remember. Well, this might be after the gnomes come now, out. Now these are see. like oyster beds. They are. So stupid. <laughs> No, it's cute. It's cute. There are a lot of literal, literal puns. Let's see. I need to go back one more, I think. And my husband would probably say, it's your Midwest sense of humor coming out there. For the oyster beds? Yeah. So this is the magic map. Alexander. Sacred map. Alexander feels a strain. Switch back to text. Yeah, we have to hear these voices. You, you hear the gnomes? We have to hear the gnomes. Oh, okay, we'll hear the gnomes. These guys are, these guys are fun. Boy, oh, there's just a blob when they come up, aren't they? I fear scars on the auto wheelie. Watch for a foreign man, Siggy. So at this point, the Vizier has basically told them to kill Alexander if he shows up. So they throw you into the water and you die. So you've only got a few seconds, really, to, to deal with these guys. Alexander holds the flower of stench out to the gnome with a jumbo nose. <laughs> jumbo nose. <laughs> Tom Troll I am, that's all I'll be. My nose knows all on land and sea. A flower of stench has washed ashore. A flower tis all and nothing more. Listen, you, Do you remember designing this puzzle? Mm -hmm. Did you have kind of the whole idea just immediately or oh I don't have the mockingbird. <gasps> oh no. Uh oh. This is not gonna end well. Alexander holds this the guy is the, the, the ear gnome gnome. with the immense ears. My ears can hear nothing so clear as the sound of a man standing here. A man, a man so clear of ears, we shall send him to his ear. This isn't going to end well. <laughs> oh, but I'm so glad we got to see it. Alexander drowns a lot in this game. Toss you don't know what you're doing. How fun is this? I want this on my iPad. <laughs> Are any of the King's Quest games playable in anything but PC? You know? I don't think so. Or even any of the series games. A so there's, a good, there's a good pun. Consensus. Oh my gosh. Uh, so let's see. We can try that one more time and get. So we need the nightingale. Need the nightingale. Yeah, this would be great to play. Even with these graphics, I would still like to play it on iPad. Of course, it's probably Good because. Day, Prince Alexander, the pawn shop owner does. So do you remember if. Uh, How this fair guy was, you, merchant? Was also I based on no someone who works at Sierra? If the truth be known. No, not that I recall. So you have to trade some things. What did you get from him? Oh, at this point I had, so when I did this save file, I had not yet found the copper coin. So I hadn't gotten access to his, his bevy of goods. It's a Alexander tricky one. pushes the plank to one side. A box has been partially buried under sand. When you when you started designing puzzles for adventure games, did you There's just play a ton of, of adventure There's games, nothing. or what influenced Alexander. the way you made King's Quest VI and and Gabriel Knight and so on? I was a huge fan. 
Uh, I bought a PC in like 89, and the first games I got were King's Quest 4 and uh, San, San, San Francisco. And I just love them. I, I love the, the cuteness of the Sierra stuff, and um, I have this cup of ended up buying basically every other enough? game that they had and then applying to work there. So, very much total Sierra to school, make his you know. How did you that mechanical get hired? Nightingale looks intriguing. I was, Very well. my degree was in computer Your science and I was well working spent. for Hewlett Packard and, as a network remember. engineer at the time and uh, trying to write a novel on the side. So I, I discovered the Sierra games, it was like total love at first sight. And I applied to them and I, I sent them a you know, resume and I was like, look, I'll do programming, I'll do QA, I'll do writing, I'll do whatever you want. And I sent them a short story with it. And I didn't hear back and like a year later I got a phone call, I mean like literally a phone call from this guy who was recruiting for a new writer's block and he's like, I found your your resume in the in this pile and I started reading the short story and I got to the end of it and the last page was missing and I was so pissed off <laughs> that I couldn't finish the story. Then I was like, well wait a minute, you know, it must have been a really good story. So did you he called remember, me for an interview. Do you remember what you had sent to him? Yeah, it was this this sort of coming of age short story about this boys school and this swimming instructor who was this like really beautiful woman and how all the boys had this crush on her but anyway so that was the, that was the story that got you in the door yep it's interesting that the portraits change depending on if you have voice on or not that is strange i guess it, they had different art for the cd-rom version and hmm. for the disc version and the cd-rom version just had both because you had so much space on a CD. So that guy smells a nasty flower. This guy, we need the nightingale. Going from being a writer to tr trying to write a novel to then writing for adventure games, how did that change just the way you wrote characters and, and stories? Well, you know, for, for King's Quest specifically, I was trying to sort of stay within the same, you know, I mean, it was an established universe, an established storytelling style, and so I was trying to stay within this within that tradition while also adding in some deeper and more interesting elements to it. So I don't know, I mean it's uh, you know, I was just a big fan of adventure games, so it was you know, it was something I was really passionate about and something I loved, so it was it was fun to try to write for it. So when you went on to through Gabriel Knight you were kind of you were more that was more your game than King's Quest, right? That was kind of a new, mm -hmm. a new thing. So what, what did you bring to Gabriel Knight that you kind of wanted to do but hadn't, hadn't been able to do yet? Well, Gabriel Knight was a real departure from the other Sierra games at that time. It was a very mature storyline, very dark, uh, scary storyline, and. Um, so that was, that was really different and new, and I really wanted to basically take the interactivity of the Sierra games and, and put a you know, much more uh, deeper, more adult storyline on it with it. So this is one of my favorite screens uh, in the game because everything here is just a ridiculous visual pun, pretty much. <laughs> so yeah, here's Mr. Rotten Tomato, who acts like a jerk. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And the hole in the wall over here. Mm -hmm. And the wall, wall flowers. flowers. Mm -hmm. um, the snapdragons. <laughs> and the baby's tears. This thing over here will kill you. Clean vines, yeah. And this was another 
a really good puzzle. Iceberg lettuce. So do you remember what you do with this? It melts, doesn't it? It does, yeah. If you keep it in inventory too long, it just turns into a puddle of water. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's, so do the game, does the game have uh, an actual time system where time is passing? Bump on a log, because we just passed the bump on the log. We did just pass the bump on the log. <laughs> yeah, so is, is time passing even when you just sit on a screen, or is there like, do you remember if there's a counter, you know, when you move between screens? I don't remember. Um, it, it probably was some kind of a timer that just ran off the system clock. But. So if you wait too long, your head of iceberg lettuce gets mushy and then turns into a puddle. But you can come over here to the Isle of the Beast, and there's this really hot boiling water that will kill you. But we can chill it out. you can pick up. It's oh, man, I was, like, couldn't even figure out what that was. It was so pixely. But that lamp really tantalizes you to try to cross that water because you know from earlier in the game you talked to the uh, the lamp trader reseller and he so clearly you know you want a lamp but then he disappears for most of the game until kind of towards the end when you can trade for the I guess the genie's lamp is what you're trying to do. Again the this is the genie yeah. who wants to kill you. You don't want to do that. You go over there, you're going to be in trouble. I wish I could throw this brick at him. I think eventually he gets tired of waiting and runs off. I can't remember how you get past those archers. There must be some kind of shield that you get. It is exactly a shield. So let's see, we can go to the cliffs. The logic puzzles were one of my favorite things. I, I love logic puzzles, so it's very... Uh... The logic cliffs also tie into the, the old Sierra school of copyright protection and having some mm. info hidden in the, the manual. So let's see, we got to I don't even really remember what the puzzles are, but as soon as I see them. So the, f the answer to the first one was you had to type in rise, and I can't remember what exactly. It, how does it, what, do you, what does it say? Um, so we can load, let's see, we can load an earlier one. There appears to be something etched into the face of the cliff. Ignorance kills, wisdom elevates. And there was a, so this was in the manual. There's something that I think it even explicitly says rise. Mm -hmm. Do you remember does, like writing out all these puzzles? Did you know in advance that? Nothing happens. Uh, I think you had to flip the S from the third one. I might have gotten the wrong, wrong S. That S. Ooh, what is it, this E? Huge that blocks e. of stone so specific, erupt from the granite cliffs. This E too. You know, I really haven't gone back and replayed any of my old games wonder. because you That's know you end up playing so much. Mm -hmm. You know, indeed. it's like what was playtesting like when you were making these games? Just play it over and over and Just over. Everybody and, played you know. it. Well, mostly QA and the designers and. Um, more than like the programmers or artists, but. Did Sierra always have QA, or was there a time mm -hmm. when it was kind of just everybody's playing the game? They had QA when I was there, by the time I was there. So I'm curious if these puzzles were meant to be solvable without having the hints Alexander in the manual. The I ended up downloading a digital the... version of the manual to be able to solve, so this, yeah, that seems like you'd have to... Pretty tough to solve without having mm -hmm. having the manual on you. And I don't even remember now. Let's see, this is one. I know this is one. But I'm probably going to get it wrong. Solve this but not too long ago. But some of these puzzles ago. are things you can figure Nothing out. Happens. Yeah, I think there are three that word puzzles and three of these kind of language... 
the, the language of the, the ancients, I guess, the winged ones. But I forget what the, the keys are. Nothing happens. <laughs> but I got that one wrong, so let's see. Can maybe find one. I'm not sure if I have any of that. Now, I did you name these or were these named? I did name them. <laughs> as I was gradually, gradually losing my mind trying to solve some of these. Let's see. Okay, here's one I saved partway up. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. This might be another. Uh, so this one, there was an or you had to push these buttons in the right order. And that was again, it was a clue in the, the book. And I feel like you can't press that one. Nothing happens. One of these. Alexander, Alexander yeah, gets press the that feeling one. that was the wrong button. Wrong button. Oops! That's the clue. Look in the book. The cliffs can we can Alexander. Nothing happened. Alexander Don't remember what the order is. Nothing happens. Alexander Nothing happened. Try um Alexander two four one. Four one. Nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Alexander. Nothing happens. The, Alexander. So the clue for this one was something about like the the second oldest and then the youngest and then the oldest or something. And mm -hmm. the idea being that this was like you know yeah. a, a family or, or something like that. But we can skip all to right. skip to a different one. Uh. So those are all very tough to solve without about the manual, if not impossible. Again, here's the genie. Wants us to die. It would be rather rude. Come the old woman has a pleasant grandmotherly face, <laughs> but something about her makes Alexander uneasy. So she wants us to eat these berries. All right, we I'll try. Oh, goody. Eat quickly, dear boy, and I'll show you the way to the Lord and Lady of this Isle. What? Oh, <laughs> slightly Dead. better, pretty one. I think you think about it now, having a character in the game which is constantly willing to die, it would probably piss people off pretty badly. And, and then there's some land I have for sale. And there's the no restore on here. Tamir. I mean, you have to re I mean, there's you have no have automatic restore. Right, it has no, to be a save be. file that you made. Um, so if you didn't, Crazy. I guess people probably saved pretty frequently. Yeah. Uh, where else should we jump? So the Minotaur's lair is it's pretty tough. It's quite a maze getting through there. And so the, the, the Isle of the Druids. Of mysterious drums and chanting. I think you need something. You need a spell prepared because these guys will treat you to, I want to say, probably the most grisly death in the game. I guess you can come here first as long as you. So the next time you come to the island, Alexander the druids takes will the capture you and they'll cook you alive. Alexander reaches into the fire pit and takes a lump of coal. Uh -oh. Alexander is frozen at the spectacle before him. Robed figures are gathered go. around a bonfire. Some mystical ceremony is taking place. But as to its purpose, Alexander has no clue. Brothers, look! Uh-oh. Alexander's been seen. <laughs> this must be the foreigner we were warned about. How appropriate that he should come during our rain festival. Place him in the sacrificial cage. Wait! I must rescue the princess! There's an ancient druid saying, 
A man who would save others must first save himself. Yeah, the old age. Alexander is pushed that. into the confining wicker <laughs> cage. A lot of the dialogue in the game is very, very playful. And I guess kind of like a, a strange mix of modern is and, out over the bonfire. and faux old fashioned. So here if you have the right Alexander spell prepared, it will boil over in your pocket and cause a rainstorm, I think. Um, but I definitely don't have that spell is prepared, so <laughs> this hot. isn't going to end well. Oh, this is going to be gross. This is really good. Alexander passes out from the heat before the first tongues of flame oh, wow. ignite the wicker. He doesn't actually have to burn. Still, his entire body yeah. melts. Well, that's kind of gross. Tickets up next. That so was a when bit you guys came up, and it's kind of fun, I think. Alexander that, should have been know, better prepared. Every time you die, you go to this place, but then it's like literally some place you need to go in the game I as was, a living person. I was just going to ask about that because that is that totally blew my mind the first time I play it. Of this, it it's kind of a you're combining like the meta element of this is a gameplay trope. You die, you have a game over screen of sometimes, and this was just a playful game over screen, but then. You guys made that an actual location, and you have to deal, we'll go deal with those guys, and we have to trick them, basically, by making them think we're dead when we're not. So let's see if I can remember how to get over there. We have to go back to the cliffs. Alexander pulls out his magic map. <laughs> pulls out his magic map. <laughs> Alexander feels a strain. Was being able to go to the land of the dead something you guys planned from the very beginning? Yeah. Do you remember who came up with that? I, I'm pretty sure it was me. I, you know, if it's dark, it was probably me. <laughs> Is it something to do with pomegranate seeds? Uh, so the horse. Hmm, so I might not have triggered something. The the death steed will come here and feed on on these berries and you have to jump aboard. Um, and you need the right spell to, I guess, to lure, to be able to ride, ride the horse to, to lure him or, or something. Let's see. So this is like the first, one of the first screens after you get through the gate. Or maybe this is before the gate. So this is the Cosima's parents. The queen has already given Alexander her advice, and the king is too distressed to even notice Alexander's presence. So you talk to them and you found out, find out that they were killed by the vizier instead of being having suffered an accident like you thought. Or like everybody the spirit thought. of a woman hangs like a puff of smoke in the air. Why do you not rest, sad spirit? Rest? I cannot rest. My son is lost. Lost? You mean in this realm? Is there anything I can do? Take this handkerchief. If you get back to the land of the living and find him, tell him that his mother is waiting for him here. By this kiss, he'll be able to find his way to the realm of the dead. I'll do my best to find him. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my Ali. So I think up here is the entrance to the land of the dead. We're just, I guess we're just in purgatory right now. <laughs> So this is a screen that you to come to probably uh -huh. 30 times by this point in the, the game. Entrance. And there's some way to get this guy's key, but I don't remember how to do it. His, his skeleton key, appropriately. But you can skip that, and this guy Get will probably kill you <laughs> if you try to get in. But thankfully, we got a ticket from somebody. I have a 
ticket? Oh, on. Next. So where do you get that ticket from? I don't know. I think the queen gives it to you in the, in oh, the screen before seeing his parents. Apparently, Alexander's not the only one who's curious about the body on the path. So we get this guy's... Gauntlet. Alexander takes the knight's black gauntlet. Flesh may cross the portal and seek its master, death. Flesh may go where death is trod and challenge, like Scheherazade, he who reigns beneath the sod to spare a mortal's breath. <laughs> sounds? That sounds serious. <laughs> yep, so I like writing rhymes. So did you write all, this, the, all the, rhymes, the serious yeah. dialogue and then... Uh, someone else would come in and add a zounds at the no, end just, I just, to, just to lighten it up. Yeah. Just oh, so we have to get we need to get some water from Alexander the river sticks. Scoops a little of the river sticks into the teacup with the swamp. That's important. I forgot how many rhymes I had put in this game. It was fun. Will these coins do as fair for passage? I put rhymes in something like Jaren this. Accepts the well, we have, I guess, the poem on the days. On the have, boat. Serial killer riddles. Yeah. A little bit easier with a fairy tale game. What was the day to day like working on this game with the rest of the team? What were your the duties split up between everybody and in terms of writing and working Alexander on puzzles? Reaches out to open the gate. We were Suddenly, in sort of a the wood trembles beneath of, his fingertips. You know, Chris was having some remodeling done. So we the, this whole project we were in like this trailer out in the parking lot. Wow. And um touch has awakened my sleep. I smell the blood of a mortal. Reach out thine hand again, fleshy human, that I might devour it. <laughs> Sure enough, if it you try to touch him again, he'll just kill you. Since I lost eight. Yeah, this is pretty dark. So, um, I, you know, I sat next to Robert Lindsley, who was the chief the lead programmer on this, and um, you know, wrote tons of dialogue and play tested and you know, finalized the design and stuff like that. What kind of computers were you guys working on for, for this game back then? Well, that's a good question. Um, I guess they must have been PCs, but you know, we had the big old monitors, you know. <laughs> Some giant CRTs. Yeah. I'm sure you had hard drives with several megabytes of storage. <laughs> Did you have to test the game and design the game on multiple computers at once? Because I know it ran, eventually no, ran on the Amiga. I just did, you know, sort of a high-end machine for what we were trying to achieve, and then QA had the responsibility of testing all the alternatives. Was King's Quest VI, was this using the same engine that Five had used? Like, what was the technology? I think so, that? yeah. Um, I remember during Gabriel Knight, they had an engine upgrade. They went to a new, a new generation, and that was that real hassle because we were in the middle of the project. And of course, once we migrated to it, everything broke. But I think uh, King's Quest VI was on the engine that had been around for a little while. Do you remember the solution to this riddle? Hang on. Circles outwardly. So L O V E must be love. Must be. <laughs> did you get that one the first time you played it? I did. All right. He's really upset about <laughs> you figuring it out. Oh. Uh. Twee. Did a lot of the team who worked on King's Quest VI with you also work on five and go on to do do seven? I don't. I don't remember. I mean, I I want to say that 
King's Quest VI was Robert Lindsley's first lead, first time he was a lead programmer. Um, and Bill Skirvin was the art director on it, and I, I think that was, he hadn't worked on a King's Quest before, so they frequently changed up teams, just like whoever, you know, Roberta usually got the best people in the company, and you know, it's just a matter of who was available and who was already engaged on another project. And, um, So your first big touch at Sierra as a, a big writer was to have Alexander go face to face with death, death. in the underworld. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember the solution to, so first off we have to insult him with a glove, throw down. I see, so you try to rescue her parents. So if you don't do that, you can still rescue the princess, but I guess she's a little bummed out that her parents are dead. I think maybe they come back and they prove that the vizier was a villain or something. That sounds right. Rally their supporters. I think you have to make them cry, don't you? They do. Yep. Do you remember coming up with that puzzle? I'm sure, yeah. Uh, you know, it's just been, like, it's been so long that, I mean, this is like all vaguely familiar. Um, yeah, it's making carb. I can't remember how you do it. What do you have in inventory? The mirror, show himself, right? You got it. Truth alone shall be my sword. Oh, okay. His eyes get real big. This is so deep. <laughs> <laughs> Transfixed. Single solitary tear. The mirror of truth cracks from the strain. <laughs> <laughs> so that's saving. This is awesome. Saving the king and queen. You created what is the maybe the fan favorite Prince Quest, so you're definitely doing something right. That's awesome. I'm certainly not alone, but yeah, as I said, I mean, I was such a huge fan of this game myself, so it's uh. <laughs> it's so convincing. Um, Not bad for 91. Yeah. It was really exciting to be able to work on it. So unfortunately, when I was playing through, I missed the skeleton key. Like, like I said, I couldn't remember how to get that. So when I got up to the castle later, I could get through most of it. So let's see, I can load, load a file. As far as I got in the castle, I talked to Jalo, the the jester, and oh, so the, jo the yeah, Jalo was the one who was in love with her in my original uh, idea, and the, not the genie. It's a different character, right? The genie and Jalo are different characters. They are, yeah. The genie is the court jester, right. yeah. Kasima is gone. So Where yeah, you have to give Kasima the dagger. Have you have like two seconds. I'm turning out to be. You have about two seconds to give her the dagger, so that she can defend herself. 
later. And come down here and we can go into the Vizier's room. Alexander hears the sound of scratching coming from the So we can see him through here. Alexander looks there are a lot of holes in this castle. <laughs> And, the, and they never notice them, you know? <laughs> it's like a gaping hole with an eye in, it, in their wall, but... Dear Shadrach, salutations from the Society of the Black Cloak, etc., etc. My long preparations <laughs> are about to come to fruition. In a matter of minutes, I will... So I think this bit, this bit ties into the last game where he, he name drops Mordak, I think, is the name of the yeah, evil wizard. Yeah, there was a... The... Once I've established my power and my crown, I can stage another accident. So I guess if you didn't go to rescue the king and queen, that's when you the would discover has proven that he had actually stubborn, killed them you know. instead of She's them having been quite an accident. A dangerous quotes. little thorn in my side. In a way, it is a shame I have to kill her. She is lovely and would be amusing to keep around, but I can't risk her talking treason to one of the guards. Why is he, like, so far, I've managed to lock her away, but I right? can't continue that forever. <laughs> well, on to it now. Point. I'd send her to you, but as you know, I had no luck in doing so with not Mordek. dictating to anyone. <laughs> I close in triumph. King Abdul Alhazred. I think it's about time to see if Shamir has taken care of the wench as I asked. It's almost time for the wedding. <laughs> wow. <laughs> He's practically twirling his mustache here. You did the make him pretty evil. words fill Alexander with blazing anger and fear for Cosima's life. That blackguard, that murderous swine, <laughs> he'll not have his way if I have anything to say about it. You badass, Alexander. I like how the light comes back through the, the hole when you're not standing there. <laughs> that's, that's cool. It's a good touch. Alexander sees nothing of interest. Oh, there's a, like a door here. So this is tantalizingly sees... close to the end of the game, but I needed you need a skeleton key to I think to open this chest. The trunk is locked. Oh my. We can Alexander see what happens. Opens the ebony mm -hmm. box and there's something in here. Alexander can read the piece of paper with inside the ebony box is Zebu. a piece of paper with the word Zebu printed on it. Zebu. The brush is old and small. Alexander isn't interested in taking it. Finding Cosima is no game of So <laughs> because he doesn't give it. <laughs> burn a perfectly good hand. A fire in a small heart. Oh, so I remember the, the issue is you need proof, basically, to to convince the guards not to kill you. Back through the wardrobe oh. to reach the secret passage. Secret passage. Oh, that's just going back in the hallway. Got it. So the guards are outside, and we need to convince them that Alexander's not the bad guy. There's nothing of interest about that here. part of the small table. Unfortunately, if we go out, Alexander sees nothing of interest in that. Open the door. Alexander steps confidently out into the upstairs hallway and sees two guard dogs. Hey, who the? Um, hello oh. there. Don't just stand there, grab him, Bay. Uh, I'll bet it's that saboteur fellow the wizard warned us about. I say we run him through right here and now. No, woof. Wazir will run you through if he doesn't get a chance at the prisoner. Let's put him in the dungeon for safekeeping. Then we'll go tell the captain. <laughs> then we'll go tell the captain. I, if you're right, let's go. So I guess I'm thrown down in the dungeon. You'll stay in here until we find out what the wazir wants to do with you. you. Crack his head on the ground? The guard dogs leave Alexander to his fate, locking the door noisily behind like them. by rats or something. Alexander wonders how he'll get out of this one. So there's probably some way to get out of here, but... Oh. Oh, Jowl's gonna let you in. Prince Alex! Jowl! What are you doing here? Never mind. Quick! Before the guard dog patrol comes around again. But... How did you know I was... 
This is no place to talk, Alexander. Just trust that I know everything that goes on in this castle. Now, be more careful. If you get caught again, I don't know if I'll be able to get you out. So let's re use your one get out of jail free card. I think there's one other way to escape without him, and then, then you're screwed. Alexander. Um, but I'm betting that those guard dogs are probably back in the hallway. So if you didn't get the skeleton key, there's a way around that, armor, looks like. But sees nothing. Maybe. Alexander, Alexander opens the secret passage. So in this playthrough, I had taken the, the long path of going through the underworld. Short path, you can sneak in with like a, a maid outfit. Sneak in with the, yeah, just like a woman. the people preparing for the wedding, I guess. Um, and that has a whole different sequence of the things you have to do for the solution. Well, let's see if the guard dogs are just back in their spot. Because if they do are... you have to get out in that particular homeboy? I think that's the only way to get upstairs, though I could be wrong. Let's see. Let's find out. Well, Alexander there steps are. confidently out into the... Um, um, don't just stand there. So let's see, we can try restoring. And could try the other doorway down here. But he might say, can't go that way, I'll get caught. Alexander hears the clear sound of guard dog voices coming from behind the door. He decides opening the door wouldn't be wise. And so I think without the key and without proof, there's no way to, to clear your name. But you rescued the king and queen. Where are they? <laughs> I think they're waiting until the last minute to jump in. We got to do all the work. I wonder if we can go that way. This is where Jala went up here earlier. Oh, well. Uh-oh. Guard dogs. <laughs> An intruder! Grab him! Uh, I, I was just looking for the kitchen. Nice try. I'll bet you're the foreign saboteur the wazir warned us about. <laughs> That's a jam way He again. sure fits the description. He's supposed to be dangerous, Mike. Let's throw him in the dungeon, then go tell Captain Saladin. Right. Good idea. Couldn't you just use dog biscuits or something? You'll stay in here until Only we find out what the wizard wants to do with yeah. you. <laughs> the guard dogs leave Alexander to his fate, locking the door noisily behind them. Alexander wonders how he'll get out of this one. Well, I think, unfortunately, he's not, not going to get out of this one with the save file I had, so we'll leave it there. But, Jane, thanks for joining me to play through that was really great to see you again. King's Quest VI so for the first time in 20 years or so. And until next time, we will have more classic game retrospectives on PCGamer.com. This is no place to talk, Alexander.